The Las Vegas Raiders are in a very, very interesting position going into a matchup against the Cleveland Browns, a team that's ready to come out there and potentially turn their season around, right? It's a team that has upside, that has some some very, very solid players, but it's a team that hasn't been able to figure it out. I think their quarterback kind of sucks in Deshaun Watson, but the Raiders haven't you know, been known to make teams a lot better or quarterbacks, I should say, a lot better that probably shouldn't be having success. At the same time, has DJ Glaze actually taken over the job for the Raiders? I saw some really good things from this guy, but he has a very, very important matchup coming up against Miles Garrett. We're going to get into that. And Devontae Adams also came out and supported Gardner Minshew. We'll get into what he kind of said as well a little bit later on. Let's get right into it, man. The Raiders have a huge matchup against the Cleveland Browns, and Miles Garrett's coming to town. Miles Garrett is probably the greatest player I've ever watched, and I don't say that lightly. You know, I don't hype guys up. I don't say things just to say it. Miles Garrett is different. Miles Garrett is 280 pounds. He weighs 25 more pounds than Max Crosby. He's stronger than Max. He's faster than Max. He's quicker than Max. And, uh, you know, to me, and, and I'm just not hating on Max. I love Max. When I look at defensive linemen in the NFL, I have four tiers, right? I have the bottom tier, which puts like Tyree Wilson, a Cleveland Farrell, right? Bottom tier. You got the tier above that, which has guys like David Clowney. It has guys like Malcolm Kuntz. You have the tier above that, which has uh, Max Crosby. It has uh, TJ Watt. It has Michael Parsons. And then you got the, the 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 tier at the top, right? And that tier has one guy, in it, and that's Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is a absolute superstar. This guy's so fast. He's so quick, but he weighs 280 pounds. This guy has a crazy twitch. The way he's able to jump and change direction. The way this guy will get right into and throw your ass into the quarterback with his power. All right, this guy has a rare combination. Tyree Wilson was drafted with the seventh overall pick. Trayvon Walker with the first overall pick because these guys resembled Miles Garrett. My right, teams were trying to find that next Miles Garrett, and uh, there's there's only one Miles Garrett. He's one of one, and uh, they're gonna line up Miles Garrett against DJ Glaze on every single snap. This guy's gonna have a moment where uh, you know this is a welcome to the NFL moment for DJ Glaze. DJ Glaze, I think, is going to end up starting for the Raiders. Darren Munford did not practice for the Raiders. So what that means is at this point, I don't think DJ uh I, I don't think Darren Munford's gonna end up starting. And with the Browns, you know, they're gonna put Miles Garrett on the rookie. Guy in this very you know, second ever NFL start. And DJ Glaze is gonna have to be able to prove himself against a really, really good offensive lineman. And I also think there's a realistic chance that uh DJ Glaze is the Raiders starting right tackle going forward. Based off his tape, he had so many good snaps. He had so many solid moments. And I do think that the Raiders will have to figure out the chip help and how often they're double teaming whoever it is lined up over DJ Glaze because he's going to have moments where he loses, right? But DJ Glaze has real upside to become a good football player. Thayer Munford really does not have that. Thayer Munford is where he's at right now, and he's not going to get much better, right? You can just tell Thayer Munford's limited with his movement. He's limited in how quick he is and how fast he is. To me, it makes sense for the Raiders just to roll forward with DJ Glaze at this point. And I think there's actual upside with this guy. Now, he did have some losing snaps against David Clowney, and I think it's important to talk about those snaps. He had one play in which he got straight up bull rushed by Clowney, and ultimately he got pushed right back into Aiden O'Connell. Clowney got off the block and he got the sack on the quarterback. There are other moments where Jadavion Clowney beat DJ Glaze. Now, they didn't all lead to quarterback sacks or quarterback hits or tackles for losses. But uh, these snaps here where you're losing over the course of a game do lead to a guy actually, you know, giving up sacks and actually giving up things. But but again, to be fair, DJ Glaze had a lot of really good, really good snaps as well. Right. And I think we got to consider all of those different things when you look at a rookie literally in a second ever NFL game. I think DJ Glaze has some real upside. And I think for the Raiders, it doesn't make sense to go back to, to, to Thayer Munford at this point now. Thayer Munford is probably a little bit better than DJ Glaze at this point, right? I think if you put Thayer Munford out there, uh, you will probably get less losing snaps because of the fact that he has experience. But I also think if Thayer Munford goes up against Miles Garrett, he's going to get his ass kicked as well. He's too slow to handle Miles Garrett. Uh, he probably has the power to handle him, but I, I, you know, I don't think Miles Garrett's going to attack Thayer Munford trying to use power, right? I don't. That wouldn't make sense. But uh. I'm excited to kind of see what DJ Glaze does do as we kind of go forward. I expect him to be the Raiders' full-time starter at this point. But we got other news that's kind of coming out as well. You know, when you think about the Las Vegas Raiders against uh, the the you know Carolina Panthers, a team we should have probably beat, 
You think about the moment that that uh, Aiden O'Connell came in. You think about the moment that this guy came in. He went nine to twelve. He led a touchdown drive. And then you also think about what Antonio Pierce said earlier in the week, where he said, "We're not hundred percent sure if we're sticking with Gardner Minshew." And it makes you think: Should the Raiders actually go forward with with Aiden O'Connell at this point? And I know there's still a certain portion of the Raiders fan base that thinks Aiden O'Connell should be the quarterback. But of course, Antonio Pierce just came out. He went to Ian Rappaport and told Ian Rappaport that uh, the Raiders are sticking with quarterback Gardner Mitchell, right? So Aiden O'Connell is obviously not going to start for the Raiders. And I think that's a smart decision by the Raiders. The Cleveland Browns have a good defensive line, generally speaking. Right? It's not just Miles Garrett. They have a good defense, generally speaking. The Browns have a top 10 defense, in my opinion. Uh, they have some ballers on that side of the football field. And they have a really good defensive coach, right? And you can't overlook that aspect of things. Uh, so the Raiders sticking with Gardner Minshew, I think, makes the most sense. Also, Devontae Adams made some interesting points as well, and he supported keeping Gardner Minshew in there. Check out what he had to say. Oh, well documented, Devontae, is your support for Aiden throughout mm. training camp, throughout the process. Do you think it's the right decision to stay with Gardner? I think I, I support. I don't think anything Gardner has done. I mean, it's 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 been streaky play, and I think we've all played streaky, so it's not about – um, being perfect, being out there at quarterback. And you also don't want your quarterback walking on eggshells, you know, mm. because what, what message does that send Aiden, you know, the, the moment they plug Gardner after three weeks of, you know, naming him the starter, you know, it kind of just doesn't give you a feeling of security knowing that, you know, it's like having a, a girlfriend and you let her know, you make her feel like every day she could be out the door. Like that's not the, that's not the feeling that she wants. And I don't think you're going to get the best product out of your girl if she's thinking that she's going to get kicked to the curb every <laughs> single day. So, um, I don't think that's the mentality that we have as a team. And like I said, I think that, um, you know, moving forward, uh, they're going to give him some more opportunities and hopefully we can do a little bit better. So Devontae Adams is 100% right in what he's saying. First and foremost, it doesn't make sense to start a quarterback and say, you're our guy and then make the change after three games. That just doesn't make sense. Unless a guy's just not ready, right? Like Bryce Young, for example, you bench him because he's obviously not ready. He needs to develop. You know, that makes sense. But for the Raiders, Gardner Minshew is like five, six years in the NFL. Like, he doesn't need to develop. But you also don't take him out every time he throws an interception or every time he struggles, right? Because at the end of the day, the Raiders on the offensive side have their struggles outside of Gardner Minshew. But our offensive line has sucked up to this point. It's probably one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. Our run game has been absolutely terrible. And it's not even like the offensive linemen are getting their ass kicked. Although that is part of it, right? Offensive linemen are getting beat up. But it goes even beyond that. Like, our run game just is not coordinated properly. You know, you have plays where, you know, line linemen and linebackers run run game stunts, and our offensive linemen just can't process those things. And it's not that they're stupid. It's just that they're not being trained and coached. And uh, to me, that comes down to Luke Getze. That comes down to the run game coordinator for the Raiders. That comes down to just installing and making sure these guys are ready for the zone scheme. And it doesn't make sense to say, hey, we're going to go with the a, a, a heavy dose of power because the zone's not working, right? To me, that's all, you know, to me, that's amateur football, all right? Making changes after three weeks, right? Making changes at the quarterback position after three weeks. That, that shows that your your head coach doesn't know what he's doing. It shows that your offensive coordinator doesn't know what he's doing. And maybe that is true. Maybe those guys don't really know what they're doing, all right? But at the, at the very least, you got to continue to try, right? You make this decision with the quarterback. You don't want to make, your quarterback feel like, hey, I have like two games to prove it. And if I don't, I'm going to get benched, right? You definitely don't want to put Aiden O'Connell in that situation by benching Gardner Minshew. In fact, I wouldn't even take Gardner Minshew out if he struggles against the Browns. At this point, it doesn't make sense for the Raiders. You throw forward with Gardner Minshew for the next four to five weeks, right? It just wouldn't make sense to take it any other way because there's some defense that are good. There's some defenses that aren't as good. There's some teams that are better. Uh, this is a new scheme and system, so maybe it'll click down the line. And uh, it's not like Aiden O'Connell has been great either, right? Let's just be honest. In preseason, O'Connell's had his moments where he struggled. Uh, even in the plays that he played against the Raiders, you know, the guy had two plays that could have been intercepted. One, he threw it directly to a linebacker, and the linebacker just ended up dropping it. And then he had another one where Michael Mayer was wide open, and he threw it way high to the left, and the ball got tipped up, and it was just a yard outside of the defensive back's hands. Like he almost threw a second interception as well, or a potential second interception. And then he had another play where he he ultimately got sacked, right? And that obviously comes down to those limitations. And I'm not saying that's 100% on Gardner Minshew, right? What I'm saying is, 
those plays happen because the offense line struggled a little bit, right? And we would be throwing Aiden O'Connell into a situation where he's going to struggle as well. And, you know, if Aiden O'Connell has any potential, right, if Aiden O'Connell can develop into anything, you want to let him fully develop and you want to give him every opportunity. You want him to go into a scheme and system where the left tackle, left guard, center know what they're doing. Where the right guard, right tackle, and the tight end on that side are able to pass off and pick up basic run stunts. Right? You want Aiden O'Connor to go into a situation where it's a positive situation, it's a good situation. And right now I'm not sure if that's the case. And I think for the Raiders, leaving Gardner Minshew out there, a guy that's experienced, a guy that has more knowledge at this point, just makes the most sense. And you don't want to send that message of, you know, you just don't know what you're doing, right? And you're ultimately willing to change any position at any given time, at any given moment. You got to have some stability. And I think Gardner Minshew kind of sends that for the Raiders. And I think it just kind of makes sense. Uh, we got a couple more things that I want to talk about. So defensive end Malcolm Coons actually had successful surgery to, a, to repair his torn ACL, according to Sean Reed. He's expected to be ready to go in 2025. I'm excited for, for uh, Malcolm Coons to potentially bounce back and come back to the Raiders. Now, he is a free agent after the season, but I would suspect that, you know, it doesn't make sense for him to say, I'm going to go to a brand new team that's probably only going to give him a one year contract. And then once he gets to that new team, it doesn't make sense for him to, you know, then have to move a year after that, right? If he has a good year, then he ends up getting paid. It just makes sense for him to stick with the Las Vegas Raiders, the team that he's, you know, essentially drafted to. And uh, I think it's also important to note that, uh, this is going to come down to Tom Telesco wants to make this happen, and I hope he does. To me, Malcolm Coons, and you know, we're not going to give him a three-year contract at this point, uh, and he's not going to sign that either, right? He's going to bet on himself. But the Raiders should bring in Malcolm Coons for at least one year, give him eight million dollars, whatever it takes to make sure he's here for at least one more year. It'll be a year. It'll be a year in which he recovers. He might not look as good or in the early part of the year, but uh, he's a Raider player, and I'm happy that the surgery went successful. And I hope the Raiders actually bring this guy back because I think it's going to be a key part of the Raiders having success on the defensive side. Marcus Epps also ended up getting hurt. We kind of uh, have heard that. Uh, I believe he also has a knee injury. He's also out for the year. And it's unfortunate, right, because injuries didn't really happen for the Raiders that year as much. This year, they're happening, right? Uh, Thayer Munford's out right now. Marcus Epps is out for the year. Malcolm Coons is out for the year. Right, the Raiders' injuries are starting to pile up this year, and that's something that you know we we expected it to happen. But um, at the defense end position, the Raiders weren't really ready for it. But at the safety position, we are right. Uh, Isaiah Paula Mao has been looking really, really good, even in the snaps that I watched when he did come in for Marcus Epps. He's looked good, even in past weeks. The guys look good. Uh, Levi Edwards says the thing that stood out about Isaiah Paula Mao since he's got here is his work ethic. Uh, and that's actually Patrick Graham saying that, not Levi Edwards. So I'm excited to watch what Isaiah Paul Mack can do as we kind of go forward. Some people actually thought he would naturally just take over from Marcus Epps anyways, since Epps is on an expiring contract. So we'll see what ends up happening there. And then finally, Justin Fields, quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, said that the Chargers, Ravens, and Raiders are teams that talk to the Bears about trading for him. So Justin Fields actually did put it out there, right? He said that... uh. The Chargers and Ravens had quarterbacks, so he decided not to go there, right? Long-term quarterback specifically. And then the Raiders had a quarterback as well. Now, I'm not sure if he meant they had Gardner Minshew already. I'm not sure if he's talking about Aiden O'Connell. But uh, he apparently did not want to come to the Raiders either because they had a quarterback. But the Raiders did reach out and were trying to bring in Justin Fields. Now, it's interesting nonetheless, right? Because we have Luke Getze, right? So we already know Justin Fields, Luke Getze did not work. I know some people are also putting it out there that, uh, you know, Justin Fields is 3-0 and and the Raiders are 1-2 and and their offense sucks. And now Luke Etsy is definitely the problem. You know, I've always said I think Luke Etsy is the problem. But I think it is also fair to say that uh, the Steelers are, are are a very, very good football team. Right? They're well coached, great defense, right? arguably one of the top two or three defenses. And uh, I will say Justin Fields is having success on the offensive side, but it's not like he's like a top five quarterback or anything like that. But I will still stick with the fact that I think Luke Getze is a bad offensive coordinator. And I will still stay say that uh, for Justin Fields not to have success with the Chicago Bears, it goes more so on Luke Getze than it does on, on Justin Fields. right? But I don't think Justin Fields is a top five quarterback. In fact, I think the Raiders made the smart decision now that I look back at that. Uh, I'm not saying I think Gardner Minshew was the right decision or Aiden O'Connell or not getting a quarterback. But I think it was the right decision not potentially bringing in a guy like Justin Fields. You know. 
when you know if you're gonna go that route, you might as well just get a, a brand new quarterback, right? See what Aiden O'Connell has. If it doesn't work, go and draft the quarterback, right? I think that's the the most logical decision for the Raiders. Um, but I'm excited, man. There's a lot of interesting things coming out with the Raiders as we kind of move forward. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, man. How do you guys feel about DJ Glaze's first start? How do you guys feel about you know the Raiders injuries, Malcolm and would you guys sign him or not? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.